to Tree Talk. I'm Jamie Dahl with Central State University and here with Dave Apsley with Ohio State University. And of course, we both work with Cooperative Extension and we're just doing some uh, quick bits about what we're seeing out in the woods. Uh, so, of course, uh, you may have caught Dave talking some about the overstory and I'm going to talk a little bit about what's happening um, lower in the forest floor. And so there are some nice uh, spring wildflowers that are starting to pop. And the first one that we have here on the screen is uh, bloodroot. So I was uh, actually doing some hiking um, just uh, near Zaleski and um, happened to see the, the bloodroot in a, a pretty dry um, upland area. Um, but then there were also some rich woods nearby. So um, this is, uh, you see the white uh, kind of showy flower, and then um, there is uh, deep lobes in, um, on that kind of leaf, that pretty distinct leaf with the, with the lobes there and kind of deep sinuses. Another interesting thing about bloodroot is it has, um, within the stem, if you break it, it has a real red um, coloring, and that, that was actually used for red dye and has um, some medicinal treatments uh, related to asthmas and fever and that sort of thing. So um, just something to look for if you get a chance to do a little hiking. And of course, what I'm going through here is really some of these quick spring flowers, so spring ephemerals. Uh, so something to notice is they may not be around long. They, they, um, they show off quick and then disappear and they're enjoying that sunlight before the trees uh, fully leaf out. So um, next one to talk about quick is um, rue an anemone, and um, this is another um, kind of a small flower. You can see there by the, the scale a little bit as I'm standing and taking the picture, um, and I tried to zoom in on that um, closer picture. You can see it has a distinct uh, leaf that's in threes, but you notice also that there is those three lobes, and that is characteristic of an, an, an anemone, <laughs> a little tricky one to say there. Um, so just something else that you might be able to, to watch for out there on the forest floor right now. Um, this one can also be kind of in a range of um, floodplain to dry upland. Uh, these flowers that um, I'm showing right now can be, can be found statewide if in the right habitats. Um, and then this one also has um, some interesting medicinal purposes. Uh, Native Americans were known to use it for, um, to help remedy uh, diarrhea and vomiting. So it's, I think it's kind of fun to identify a few of these things and then read a little bit about them. So, and then another one to highlight, and I love this picture too, is just kind of neat with the oak leaf litter and the moss. And, but this is, uh, there's actually two flowers in that picture, so you can, you can maybe point out that the white one is that, that rue anemone again, and then the purplish one is hepatica, uh, and the leaf is really hidden in the hepatica right now because it's a basal leaf and it's, it's not showing up there. Um, but this is another one that can be kind of found throughout Ohio if in the right habitats. Uh, and interestingly, this one also is really important to some of the early insects. So early flowers are necessary for some of the first insects that are popping. So just a reminder that everything going on in the woods is connected. These flowers, um, their timing is related to what's going on in the canopy. And then some of our um, first, first forms of life coming out are relying on these flowers. So, um, so another one that you can watch for. And then I just thought I'd share how you all can go about this because I'm, I am not a wildflower expert. I just enjoy using, I take my smartphone with me, hiking with my family. I uh, love to take nice pictures of the, of the flowers and then go back and identify some. Um, so some fabulous resources. Um, ODNR has a couple places where they have some nice wildflower resources. So Division of Natural Areas and Preserves on their site, if you search Ohio wildflowers, um, they'll, they have some posts where they sometimes tell you exactly what is popping at certain times and um, show pictures. They also do some of that on their social media. And then Division of Wildlife has a really nice guidebook. They have, of course, all kinds of guidebooks, but they have one on spring wildflowers and you can download the PDF. Uh, if you click forward, Dave, 
this is an example of what you get um, when you do that. And so it's really nice. It shows kind of when you might see it, just a little bit about the description, a nice picture, um, talks about the distribution. And then I think the notes um, are really fun uh, to kind of take a look at just um, a little bit more about the plant. And um, I think with uh, children especially, it can be kind of neat to share some of that information. So Jamie, I know these are beautiful printed guides, but are they downloadable on the site too? Yep. So awesome. this, so I just pulled this and like, I I don't even have the printout with me right now. I just was looking at the PDF online. Yep. Good. So it's all there for you. Yeah. So during this time where you normally might be able to pick these up at a Division of Wildlife office, or you can actually order them through their website, um, you may not be able to get the hard copy. So you might need to rely on the downloadable versions. Yep, absolutely. So, and then I thought just another fun, um, so, you know, with all the things going on in our lives right now, I know for me, I, I basically told my family they were going hiking on Saturday. I thought it'd be good for everybody. And um, I, my seven-year-old sometimes protests hiking, but he was the one to spot in this puddle, all these tadpoles. And I don't think mom and dad would have spotted it, but he, this was the highlight of the hike for him. So just a reminder, um, get out there and, you know, let your little people do some exploring because sometimes they find things that the rest of us aren't aren't looking for. And so he he was he he could have stayed at that puddle probably for for an hour. But uh, so so other parts of the forest that are coming to life. Um, and with that, I thought I would just share this um, last slide that is just a reminder about Project Learning Tree and it shows some of the the resources so if you have seen any of our plt stuff before just head on out to project learning tree you can even just search it on the internet and search family activities but there are free ready to go activities if you're not sure what to do in um, nature with your kids uh, it'll give you some tips and there's some for if you're in the woods but there's also some for if you're at a park or just in your backyard so um, something that you all might want to check out in this time. Uh, and with that, I think we're going to transition to some resources and some up and coming events. But thanks for talking with us about what's going on in the forest. So welcome back to Tree Talk, our April edition. We just got done talking to you about some of the buds that are breaking on the trees. And Jamie talked to you about the understory plants and the flowers that we're starting to see um, here in April. Um, but I also wanted to share some of the things that are available to you as far as resources. Um, the u.osu.edu slash Southeast Ohio Woods site is where we're going to visit here in a little bit to give you some updates on our Day in the Woods program and some of the other upcoming activities that we've got going. Also wanted to share a link to our Tree Talk videos. Um, it's a little complicated to go online and find our YouTube videos through Tree, tree Talk. So we created a Go link and if you do go.osu.edu forward leaning slash tree talk. That'll take you to a list of the videos that we've got out there. I believe there's 51 of those that are available from the last several years. Um, and then finally, the go.osu.edu slash tick videos will take you to a link where you'll find hot links to three videos on ticks. We had uh, Marcus McCartney out of Washington County talk about his personal experience with ticks. And then Tim McDermott, who is up in Franklin County with Extension, is a doctor of veterinary medicine. So he gave us some nice short clips on how to protect yourself from ticks and what to do if you get a tick as far as tick removal and some other helpful hints. So and I'm going to transition here to our web page. Okay, so now we're going to visit our Southeast Ohio Woods web page. Um, some of the things that are new and upcoming is we just posted our brochure virtually. Um, unfortunately, we can't use the current print shops that we've always done and we don't have ways to distribute those. So we've posted the Day in the Woods brochures virtually and that should be the first thing you see when you go to Southeast Ohio Woods. And if you go and click, it'll actually pull up a detailed brochure with all the information that you're looking for um, on the second page here. So as we get into May and June, we've had to transition a little bit due to the COVID virus. Um, we are not allowed to do in-person programming until July 6th currently, and that could change, but hopefully by our July program, we'll back, be back to a normal schedule. 
But in May, we're actually going to do our first day in the woods program this year virtually. And we're going to call it keeping yourself in your woodlands healthy. So we've got four one hour video slots that we're going to have webinars and more details will be available as we get closer to the date. We're going to start out with spring migrating birds with Matt Schumer from OSU and Laura Kearns from Division of Wildlife. Just give you a pointer on some of the songbirds that might be migrating through where you might find them and, and what to look for. Then Gerald Bardick from the Forest Service and NRCS is going to talk about some of the health benefits of getting out in the woods. And there's nothing more important right now than to just get out in the woods and just absorb and spend some time out there to just decompress and de-stress and get some fresh air. So Gerald's going to talk about some of those health benefits at 11. At 1 p.m., we're going to have part one of our series, Keeping the Woods Healthy. And we don't have all the details worked out, but we're looking at having three or four things that you can do in the woods, little 15-minute snippets on some advice on, for instance, how to go out and walk your boundary and what to look for. Or maybe go check your trails out and see if you've had any damage or erosion over the winter. And some of the other things you might go out and scout for and look for, like some of the invasive plants. So stay tuned. More details to come on that one. And then in June, we're going to do Tree ID virtually. So um, we'll bring in some guest speakers to help with that. And we've twisted that a little bit and we'll maybe focus more on the websites and things that you can do to assist and probably pull in some short videos and photography to help with that. And then hopefully the rest of the Day in the Woods program will be back to normal when we get to that point. So the brochure is downloadable. You click on this link. There's a flyer for our Family Day in the Woods program that's going to take place in September that is intended to be printed and inserted into the, uh, the brochure. Jamie, you want to mention anything about the Family Day while we're there? Sure, yeah. Just um, anybody who's, you may be pretty familiar with the Day in the Woods, uh, but Family Day is a little bit of a newer addition. So we've only, this will be the third uh, time that we're offering our Family Day. Um, that one is actually a free event. So um, and it is, you don't have to have kids to come to family day. So um, from all ages will benefit. We end up usually with uh, quite a few partners who show up for that one. Lots of really interactive stuff for the whole family to do. Um, and it's just a great, kind of a great reason to get out into the woods and get some uh, education about what, what's happening out there. And uh, we, hope, we hope that we see some of you all at that event in September. I'll give a quick plug for just women owning woodlands in general. If you haven't heard about it, um, we have some programming that's really targeted towards uh, women landowners. Uh, and it's really, it, it includes enthusiasts, uh, also women professionals. Uh, everybody's welcome. So, so men can certainly come to our programming. It's just that we really focus the kind of marketing and messaging towards women. Uh, so anyway, we've been, we've been doing programs uh, for a little, right around a year at this point in Ohio. And um, of course, we're having to move to the webinar approach as well. Tuned for more Women Owning Woodlands programming this summer. Uh, also, just a quick plug, we have the Southeast Ohio chapter. There is actually now a Northeast Ohio chapter. So um, let me know and I can try to connect you with the person that's running that if that's of interest. There's a link here to the brochure for that as well. Yeah, thanks, Dave. So again, visit uh, Southeast Ohio Woods. Um, it's u.osu.edu forward leaning slash Southeast Ohio Woods. Um, but if you need to get a hold of either me or Jamie, um, we've got that available for you as well.